Welcome back to another episode, episode number 12 of the Transforming Me podcast. I am super excited about this week's um, lesson and what we're going to talk about. I did a workshop this mar- month called I Am Worthy, um, learning to love all of you, learning to love all of me. Um, this is important. So I wanted to kind of talk about that one this week. Um, the title of this is Learning to Love All of You. I want to deep dive there first because um, a lot of times people deal with and struggle with feelings of unworthiness. And I feel like if I can give you the tips that help you to learn how to love yourself, then you um, could work past the negative beliefs and the things of that nature. Amen. So the first thing you have to do is practice self-awareness. How many of you um, have to know who you are? Do you know what you like? Do you know what you don't, what you dislike? Do you know um, what makes you happy? Do you know what makes you sad? Are you aware of who you are? Um, A lot of times and a lot of the people that I talk to really don't know who they are. They don't understand what their likes and their dislikes are. And so I want to propose to you that you start practicing to learn who you are. One of the things that I had to learn about myself was what I liked and what I didn't like. A lot of my life um, was wrapped up in my children and my spouse. And so I really didn't know the things that I liked. And um, as I started, um, you know, developing friends and friendships and having um, close, intimate conversations, um, people would ask me, like, what do you do for self-care and what do you like? And honestly, I didn't know how to answer that question. And so um, I had to learn um, and become aware of what it was that Talana liked. And um, so I'm encouraging you to do the same thing. Um, Reflect on your own feelings and your beliefs. Why do you believe the way that you do? Why do you feel the way that you do? Do you know why? Um, Most of you that have followed me for any length of time have heard me tell the story of a little girl in a ham um, with her mom in the kitchen cooking a ham and the mom is um, cutting the ends of the ham off and putting it in the pan. And the little girl asked her mom, why did you um, cut the ends of the ham off and put it in the pan? And the mom didn't know why she did what she did. And she said, it's because my mother did it. And you can go down the hall in her room and ask her. So she went down there to her grandmother's room and she asked her grandmother, um, Grandma, mommy's in the kitchen making a ham and she cut the ends of the ham off and I asked her why she did it and she told me she didn't know why she did it. And so she told me to ask you and so a grandmother told her, I don't know, Um, you got to call your great grandmother, always did it because she did it. So when she called her great grandmother on the phone, her great grandmother told her that the reason that they cut the, hand, the ends of the ham off in her day was because the pans was too small and in order to get the ham to fit, they had to cut the ends of the ham off. So I wanted to talk about that Um, as a belief, because a lot of times, what are we doing that's been handed down from our families? What are we believing about our life and about ourselves um, that has been handed down from us? Um, So being able to identify why you believe what you believe, why do you feel that way? Spend some time getting to know and understand your emotions and your thoughts and your beliefs about yourself. Identify areas where um, it's critical, where you're critical of yourself or where you're judgmental towards yourself. Why do you feel that way? Why do you think that way? So I want you to spend some time with yourself becoming self-aware. So that's number one. Then I want you to be mindful, engage in some mindful mindfulness practices to become more aware of your, um, of your dialogues and the things that you're saying to yourself and how you feel about yourself. Um, become more aware of that by being mindful, um, your patterns of thinking and where these thoughts come from. I want you to create a self, um, compassion, be, um, cultivate self-compassion. I apologize. Um, how do you cultivate self-compassion? Treat yourself kindly. How many of you have ever, somebody's ever done something to you and they messed up and they came to you and they apologized and they said they were sorry and you forgave them and you guys just went on with your relationship, right? And then you do something, you mess up and you're beating yourself up and you're not speaking kindly to yourself and you want to punish yourself for what you did. I'm going to challenge you today to treat yourself kindly, to practice talking to yourself as you would your friend, as you would your sister, as you would your brother, as you would your mother. If you want to talk to them that way, don't talk to yourself that way. Understand and realize that you deserve what you give them. Um, Talk to yourself with kindness and understanding, especially during challenging times, especially during times where you mess up and you, you know, you, you want to beat yourself up because you did something, you know, you didn't, um, you know, you shouldn't have done or whatever the case may be. I want you to challenge yourself to cultivate self-compassion, forgive yourself. You know, um, one of the hardest things to do is not to necessarily forgive people, even though that can be challenging at times. But one of the, one of the most challenging things is to forgive yourself. 
to give yourself some grace, to not hold yourself hostage um, for what you've done. Learn to let go of your past mistakes. You are not what you did. You are not what you've done. You're not what people say that you are. I always tell people you are what God says that you are. Understand that your past mistakes is part of you being a human being, a part of your makeup that you're going to make mistakes. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, you're going to mess up. It's a part of who you are. Understand this, that in you messing up, it's an opportunity for you to grow and learn from what you did wrong. Learn from what didn't work. Change your negative self-talk. Identify the challenges um, and recognize that negative self-talk is a challenge, right? Um, it's easy to talk down to yourself and to beat yourself up for what you didn't do right and how you didn't do this right and how you didn't do that right. It's easy. Um, let's, let's just be honest, right? To, to go to the negative side, to lean to the negative side. But I'm here to challenge you to lean to the positive side and learn how to stop talking negative to yourself and, um, and start talking positive to yourself. Learn how to re reframe your words. Learn how to reframe your thoughts. The Bible tells us don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Um, how you do this is using positive affirmations. You guys that know me know that I'm really big on positive affirmations. The Bible says as a man think in his heart, so is he. So you are what you think. You're only going to speak what you think. Um, out of the abundance of the heart, the word heart is the word mind, the mouth speaks. So you have to change what you say um, change the words that come out of your mouth, change your confession, change your affirmations. What are you saying about yourself? Um, I'll put this plug in here that if you don't have my affirmations, go to my website, ladyttalks.com. That is L-A-D-Y-T-T-A-L-K-S.com under freebies and get my affirmations and say them over your life every day. Um, my life changed when I started saying affirmations. My life changed when I started watching what I was saying to myself and what I was confessing. And I started confessing God's word. That's when my life changed. That's when I started writing these affirmations. And it started out with just a page. And then as I kept saying it, God would add more. So now it's about three pages. So if you don't have a copy of those affirmations, go get them. Say them over yourself every day and watch your life change. Focus, focus on your strengths, your achievements, achievements. How many times have you patted yourself on the back or told yourself you did a good job? Matter of fact, when was the last time you did that? Most of the time, people don't know. They just um, go throughout life and they don't know when the last time they told themselves, I'm so proud of you for doing what you did or um, congratulations for doing what you do. We think that that's something that we're supposed to do just for other people. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not. Um, what, what can you celebrate about yourself? What are you doing? well um we always focus on what we're not doing good but what are you doing well um i want to challenge you to set healthy boundaries with the people in your life now what i'm about to say some people might not like but i'm going to say it anyway learn how to say no no is a complete sentence you learning how to love all of you is learning how to say no when you want to say yes you know a lot of times we especially as women um we we want to uh help people and we want to just do and we're naturally caregivers and that's great but sometimes you just need to say no um i can't right now you don't have to explain why no is a complete sentence you don't have to give them an explanation learn how to protect your time and your energy by just saying no to the demands that don't align with what your values and will deplete you if it's something that's going to just deplete you it's okay to say no matter of fact i, I can't hear you but you can hear you and I want you to practice saying this after me right now. I want you to just to say no. Just say no. That's a complete sentence. I want you to practice it. Um, if it doesn't align with your values, who you are as a person, if it's going to overextend you, just say no. It's okay. One of my favorite things that I'm about to say to you is this. Prioritize self-care. How do you love you? by making time for you. Make self-care a priority. I cannot stress that enough. Um, one of the things that I I do now is I do self-care. If I'm tired, I, t I lay down, I take a nap, I take a break. Um, because before I would just keep going and going and going and pushing myself and pushing myself to the point of exhaustion. That's not loving me. Um, not taking care of my mental health, my physical health, my spiritual health. Um, so now I make self-care a priority. If I don't feel like doing it, I just don't do it. Um, I'd save it for another time. I practice saying no, that's part of my self-care. Um, so if you're somebody that struggles with that, I'm going to encourage you 
to find some things you like. This is what I said earlier a little in the beginning. Finding things that you like. What do you like about yourself? What do you like to do? If you don't know, then go try different things. Go bowling. Go to the movies. Go get a massage. Go get your nails done. Go get a manicure. Go get a pedicure. Like, go do something for yourself. Learn what you like. What do you like to do physically? Do you like to work out? Do you like to walk? Do you, you know, what is it that you like to do physically, emotionally? What do you do for your emotional health? That's just as important as physical health. Um, what are you doing for your mental health? What are you doing to replenish your mind? Um, most of the time we're giving out, whether we're working a job, whether we're doing a business, like whatever it is that we're doing, we're constantly giving out. What are we doing to give back and pour back into ourselves? That's important. Um, another thing that I want to tell you is embrace your, your imperfections. You're not going to get it all right. Everything's not going to be perfect. And you have to be okay with that. Accept yourself as you are. Embracing your strengths and your weaknesses. Now, if there are some things about you that you don't like, you don't like your hair, you don't like your weight, those are things you can change. Those are things that you can, um, you can make better. But embrace overall who you are. This is why I started out with getting to know you. So once you get to know who you are, embrace that. Embrace your quirkiness. One of the things that I, I'm, the, my husband really hates when I'm really like silly and uh, when I'm tired and sleepy, I get really silly. And I went out with my sisters on um, this weekend and I was as silly as I could be. I was, why? Because this is just who I am and I get to be who I am. And I've embraced that silliness about me. And so one of my sisters said to me, oh, you must be tired. And I said, well, how did you know? And she said, because you're acting really silly. And I was like, well, I guess I am tired, but it's okay because you love me. Um, and people will embrace you when you embrace you. People will love you when you love you. Understand that your imperfections is part of who you who you are and your makeup of who God made you. Um, understand that it's necessary for you to, to see this about yourself so that you can become who God called you to be. A growth mindset is important in, 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 in learning to love yourself and all of you. Um, view the challenges and setbacks as opportunities to grow rather than the signs of a failure. I always tell people you don't fail, but you learn another re way why or how it doesn't work. What can you learn from? How can you grow from what you learn? How can you grow from what, you know, what didn't go right? I didn't fail. The thing I tried didn't work. That failed. I'm not a failure. Separate you from the failure. When you do that, you're going to make strides in life. But if the longer you keep, oh, it didn't work, I failed, I'm a, such a failure. No, 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 no. You are not allowed to talk to yourself. You're not a, um, talk to yourself like that. You're not allowed to think that about yourself. Embrace it as, yes, it didn't work. What can I learn from it? Let me give this story here. Most of you know Thomas Edison. He's the one that created the light bulb. Well, he said in his interview um, some years ago that he didn't fail. He learned 10,000 ways that it didn't work. So he never embraced failure. He just looked at it as, okay, this way didn't work. This what this is what worked. Let me take what worked out and what didn't work. Let me find another way to make it work. And that's literally how he lived his life. And the reason that we have a light bulb today is because of that mindset. So I want you to embrace that mindset. And the last point that I want to um, bring up here is how to surround yourself with, pos with a positive support system. Seek people around you that's going to lift you up, that's going to build you up, that's going to encourage you. Not people that's going to drain you. Not people that's going to suck the life out of you, but people that are going to reinforce your self-worth. People that are going to believe in you and support you and pray for you and love you where you are. When they mess, when you mess up, they're not going to judge you, but they're going to support you through what you messed up in. Those are the people you need to surround yourself with. Loving yourself, all of you, is so crucially important to you becoming who you were created to be. Let me encourage you that it's not easy. It starts with a decision. I did an interview tonight um, on Sunday night while I'm recording this, um, this podcast. Um, and I talked about the importance of who you surround yourself with in a community of people and how that is important to you developing into who God called you to be. Amen. Learning to love all of me. I pray that this bless you and that you will take these tips that I gave you and learn how to love all of you so that you can become the person that God called you to be. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for this individual that is listening to me right now. I pray God that you will bless them and show them and help them 
them Holy Spirit, how to love all of themselves, how to love themselves to the point that they can become all that you called them to be. And we give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor for it now. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I love you. Have an amazing day.